Hi everyone, I'm Jam Quinones and I do Crafting by Jam. Today I'm going to talk about how to clean and maintain your sewing machine. It is a machine just like your car. So, well, you know, it is a machine and not just like your car. But anyway, um, we're going to clean and maintain the machine. Um, my methods are my methods. It's what works for me, but definitely refer to your um, sewing manual, your sewing machine manual because they do have tips in there as well that can be hard to follow. Um, but I'm just showing you what I do. I think it'll work for you too. Um, so let me know if you have any comments or questions below and I'll try to answer them. Um, and if you're new to sewing, go ahead and like and subscribe so I can teach you all the things. First, I wanna show you the things we're gonna to use today. Um, so I have a little bottle of sewing machine oil found everywhere. Um, I mean, it really is found at almost any um, crafting or specialty shop um, online. So some of your machines maybe even came with some, so use that if it came with it. Um, you have two options. We've got a brush, all right, and so the brush can brush all the lint out. I actually prefer these cotton swabs instead. They grab all of those little fibers and lint balls a lot easier, but if you only have the brush available, go for it. It works just fine. Um, and then you'll also need a screwdriver that came with your machine. All right, so we're just going to open up this bottom section here. So I'm going to readjust and really easy. You want to use the little short um, screwdriver for this. Do not lose those screws. They're stupid expensive for what they are, like five bucks. I don't know, three bucks. Anyway, however much it is, it's annoying to have to go and replace them and then pay the money to the, replace them. So don't lose them. All right, I like to just kind of swirl it out with my finger. It works a lot easier. All right, so uh, I'm lifting up the presser foot. Want to get that out of the way. Um, and so I have lifting off the needle plate. Now you'll see that I have plenty of, I have plenty of lint in there. Um, and I've also got my bobbin. I can pull that out and, and sure, why not the bobbin case? Um, I want to clean out that bobbin case first. Just swish around the Q-tip, sorry, the cotton swab. And, um, cause I'm not sponsored by them yet. <laughs> um, anyway, so I want to just clean out all those little nooks and crannies and flip it over, get all the little guys in there. Um, and once it, this thing about cotton swabs is they're just really entirely disposable. I think you can even recycle them, but I have to double check on that. I'm trying to be better about recycling this year. So like I've been checking all of my trash. That has nothing to do with this though. Anyway, so I've got this going. Okay. So my bobbin case is clean. It doesn't have to be sparkling clean. I'm trying to focus. Oh, sorry. I hope that wasn't too fuzzy for you that whole time. Um, so I've got this guy right here, nice and clean. I'm not saying you have to eat off of it. It's just gotta be cleaner. And I mean, you can kind of see some of the junk that was on there. And that was just the cleanest part of it really, because inside this little area, just grab all of the lint. And usually I'll notice that the less, the lower quality of um, my thread, the more lint I get, um, or my cotton threads, because those cotton threads just have looser fibers often. But it often is just like your quality of thread. All right, I'm just gonna kind of go at it here and um, it's also an option to get like a little um, vacuum attachment that your normal vacuum will vacuum out all this lint. I try not to blow dry it at this point, like get the, the um, air in a can. I mean, you can, but you're just pushing the lint around inside there. So like I've even got inside this little nook here and there is lint and I can see it. Kind of. Oh, got it. See, and it gripped it. Versus that brush, it would have been really difficult to get. I'd probably just push it down more. Um, but I am just reaching all of the little spots. Because trust me, it is everywhere inside of there. 
Um, I really, I say I try to cl do this maybe once a month, and sometimes I do it once a month for like a couple months in a row. Um, but really, I probably do it about quarterly. Um, if you're an avid sewer like I am, um, you want to get your machine serviced regularly anyway, but this just does help you um, avoid problems. If I can get in there, maybe I can get that brush. Maybe that little pokey part. Yeah. Don't want to push too hard. There is a little sponge in there um, for collecting oil and whatnot, but yeah, it should be fine. Um, you shouldn't blow on it technically because you don't want to add moisture to it, uh, but you know, sometimes you just gotta. That's why when people do blow out stuff, they use that canned air or um, a really light air compression. I'm trying to find another Q-tip here, not just grab things. Um, and it's gonna help. Um, if you notice, like, your stitches starting to slowly mess up, it could be because there's lint buildup in here. And I notice that my machine likes me a lot more because they all have their own attitude. My machine likes me a lot more when I keep her clean. Um, so it is way better. And all I do with oil, one drop, okay? Like, that's it. I don't know if this is a screw top. I don't do this one. You don't have to oil it every time, like maybe twice a year. It really, a little goes a long way. Now I've got it all over my fingers, yay. Um, I don't trust this dropper. Ooh, that was a lot. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So I like to just swish it about. I don't think you actually have to technically. Um, this isn't like machine certified or anything. I'm just say showing you the way I like to clean my machine. I'm sorry, I'm right handed and totally blocking the camera that whole time. Um, but it is cleaner now. Let's put that cap back on. Alright, because um, there's a lot of movement, so if I turn my hand wheel, you can kind of, sorry, it keeps going out of focus, so if I turn my hand wheel, you can see all the movement that goes on there, and that happens every single stitch, so you can imagine it needs some sort of lubrication with all that movement. Oh, found another lint clod with that cycle, it pushed some other stuff out. Got it. That was tough. <laughs> All right. I really hope that this is staying focused because I can't see the viewfinder at the same time. All right. So that looks way nicer. Um, probably harder to tell on this, but this looks way nicer. And then all I have to do... Oh, when you're lining these, you want to make sure you've got this bobbin case put back properly. And when you're putting it back properly, like sometimes it just like doesn't want to sit right. You're like, what's going on? So you got to look for your two little indicators that could be white or green on your machine. Um, but my machine shows red. There it goes. You don't want to force it. You just kind of want to shimmy it until it falls into place. All right, and then you lay that needle pl plate right back and screw them back into place. So, oh, I mean, I'll probably jump a little bit on this. Okay, good. It doesn't have to be super tight. It just has to be tight enough to be firm and you don't want it to loosen with all the vibration that your machine does. Especially if you have your um, machine on a flimsier table like a folding table or a card table um, the more you want to pay attention to your screws being loose the screws up here too but um, it'll just vibrate things out and that's no good so um, next I'm going to show you the upper part that I do um, it's not exactly in the manual so now you know but it's what I do and I feel like it helps a little bit really this um, this part is more important for sure. You can see all the gunk I got. That's gross. Um, yeah. Alright, so um, we're gonna cut and we're gonna go over to this guy right now. The other side. Alright, so now I have the cover off and you can see this piston right inside of here. 
I guess it's not a piston really, but I call it a piston and it's right there. I don't know the technical terms of the inside of the machine. Maybe I should, but I don't. I can tell all about the outside, but as soon as I open it, no clue what the technical names are and I don't see it often enough to really deal with it. But if you're curious, talk to your local te technician. He'll know or she, usually he. They're pretty awesome either way. Um, so um, what I've done is I've actually got just a little bit of sewing machine oil on Oop, did I get it? Yeah, I got a little bit of sewing machine oil on this piece. I didn't put really enough. Let's try this again. Boop, there we go. Just a little dab. It just soaked in super quick. So I'm just swiping it. Really, you can just do a real drop, but I don't trust my dropper. So I am just going to swipe uh, the machine oil onto this and you do want to use sewing machine oil like not cooking oil if you have other like um, light machine oils I would double check to make sure that's okay to use on here um, because this is like a different version um, I don't really recommend WD-40 try to use sewing machine oil if you got it in fact go get it and then use it um, I've also used um, my roller skate bearing oil on this as well, but I doubt you guys have that handy. Really, you just want a super lightweight machine oil. Okay. Whoop. I can see it up right. It doesn't take very much either. A little bit will last you years. <laughs> Especially if you only, like, I'll only do this piston maybe like once a year. And then, um, and I'll do the bobbin case the bobbin area um, probably twice to three times a year. Doesn't have to be very much. I do make sure that this area is thread and needle, uh, thread and lint free um, because sometimes thread will just escape and it gets back there. It hasn't happened on this machine luckily, but it has happened on machines in the past for me and it was a scary place. Um, so you do wanna just check in there and make sure everything's looking. Okay, and then I'm just gonna screw this back on. All right, so we just went over how to clean and maintain your sewing machine. Please let me know if you have questions. I will do my best to answer any questions below, but also feel free to contact your local, uh, your local sewing machine store because they definitely wanna help you too. Um, I can only bring you so far and I will do my best to help you out. I'm not certified, but I hope I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but go ahead and let your friends know that I'm here to help you. All right. Have a good one. Thank you.